Hello, this is Jason with LMGI, continuing with NXCMM. Uh, in the first movie, we created a very simple inspection program using kind of a manual method. Uh, in this next uh, movie, we're going to use uh, some of the automation available within NX. You'll see that it will be able to automatically create inspection paths alter those paths so that there isn't any collisions, optimize those paths so that the machine moves in a very efficient manner, and we'll show you posting out the DMIS code, for example, uh, at the end. So here we have a, a pretty simple little kind of a test part. It's got a variety of features on it that are similar to parts you might need to measure. Now the the interesting part, we're in modeling here. We're not in the CMM application yet, but the interesting thing here is that someone's taken the time to create uh, the, the GD&T, basically the PMI, product manufacturing information uh, in this design, and they all live here in the model views. I'm not going to go into that too much today, but We'll show you how NX can utilize that and save you quite a bit of work. We're going to initialize again with a master model. Um, I think I'll use a Sheffield this time. And we'll position that component quickly like we did, nothing too fancy. And you see all the PMI is visible there if you want to, certainly you can hide that, put it on different layers or, you know, whatever you uh, would like to do. You see that uh, you have model views here also within NXCMM, uh, you can manage those as well in that, uh, in that environment. So we'll do our uh, part alignment, the minimum teach point, just so our simulation has a, a good rough idea where the part is. And then we're going to jump right to um, the magic, which is linked to PMI. So what this is going to do, it's going to automatically detect the areas, uh, the features that should be measured. It's going to create the paths based on your template that's all stored in your methods. And you can tweak these methods for your own uses to match your best practices. Uh, the tool selection, you can tell it or you can have it automatically um, choose your tool for you and the tip type and so on. In this case, we're just going to use the, the fast um, generation method. So you get a nice report at the end telling you what it found, what it was able to work with. And I'll just close that. We'll see. You see there's a number of features that were identified, and there's also inspection paths that were created, and even tolerances were were gleaned off the PMI. Now, we've got a couple of little examples here of what, you know, what you'd have to do if you needed to, if they weren't perfect. Uh, for example, this, um, this parallel is not well defined. It seems to need a, um, a vector. It's asking me for that vector. And I'll just uh, say OK. That may not be perfect, but here's another example, really just to point out that um, these can be fixed, and for whatever reason, uh, it wasn't able to uh, exactly figure out the, um, the faces that should be used. So this uh, is a perpendicular requirement, and um, again, it, I think we just need this, this vector defined and that should be fine now. We'll just generate that. 
So we actually have toolpath. Uh, so we could, in theory, uh, simulate the machine and just see what happens. And there's a full machine simulate. Uh, let's take a look at the simulation settings. There is collision checking in here. If you want to define very specific uh, things to be checked, you can do that. Or out of the box, it does it based on classification. So if a, if a component is classified as a part, it will be checked uh, against anything that's classified as fixture. So uh, that, or you can add as many collision pairs as you want. And then we'll just hit OK, and we'll uh, run the simulation on that. See, it goes to the tool holder. So immediately we're getting a collision. Um, what's happening here is the path is hitting a, a sphere that's kind of in the way deliberately to demonstrate the capability. So the path needs to be altered. So I'm going to just continue until reset. And you'll see it flash red whenever there's a, a collision. Sometimes the probe hits the table, sometimes the, the, the probe collides with the part. Um, but not to worry, there's a great uh, feature in NX where you can, you can right click and resequence the paths automatically. And what that does is optimizes the paths for shortest distance. And you can also do collision avoidance and I think I'm going to set a nice clearance plane here. Maybe off of this top face. Give it a 50. That looks like pretty safe clearance. Um, you have the control here. We I've turned on the majority of um, the avoidance methods, but you know it's very easy just to to try. Um, Try this and see, you know, what results you get. Minimum clearances, things like that. So we'll let that run. It tells us what it had to do. It had to insert some points on some of these paths. Some of them looked pretty good, um, and some of them needed a little transition. I'll show you an example of one. Well, let's see. I think we have a uh, this plane path. If you take a look at this. You can see it's it's inserted these these extra paths to get around that sphere. Uh, unless we had a really high lift on that, and that we'd sacrifice um, probably travel for all the other points. So now we should have a really uh, a really clean uh, simulation, and you could certainly go ahead and tweak it um, a little bit more if you wanted to. is all driven off the you can see the Demus code so you know that your post pro it's a great way to verify if your post processor is um, is correct because you're actually driving the machine off the Demus code the way the real machine actually runs so that's the second movie and we've got one more movie to go um, describing reporting and how to take input from the CMM machine. Maybe uh, real quickly we'll just post this out to show you how easy it is. We'll just hit OK. And there's our Demus code.